and welcome to MIC TV. Today, we're going to be discussing the buyer's journey, transforming casual followers into financial supporters. I'm your host, Greg Ferriola, along with my partner, TJ Peterson. Hi, everyone. Now, if this is your first time joining us, I'd like to welcome you to the MIC community. And for everyone watching, even those of you that aren't watching live, um, please say hello in the chat. Now, let us know your name, where you're from, your genre of music, basically anything you want us and our community to know. Also, before we get started, if you ever are in need of anything, you can find us at our website, musicianindiecoalition.com. Um, that's a mouthful, so TJ is going to totally drop that link into the comments now. Um, our site has some great resources, and you can and you can and you should you know check that out and see all the ways that we can work together if you're in need of help with your music career. Okay. Now, as discussed earlier, we are going to be talking about the buyer's journey, transforming casual followers into financial supporters. Now, if you've been watching any of our shows or have worked with us in the past, um, we've briefly discussed some of the topics of this episode in the past, but today we are going to break it down a bit further. Um, so if you have, that way you have an opportunity to really, really understand this process because it's important. And saying that it's important, in my opinion, is even an understatement because how successful you are at executing the buyer's journey will honestly determine whether you're successful in your music career. So next to creating great music, it's going to be your number one challenge and most important thing for you to focus on. Um, okay, so I think it's safe to say that all musicians and bands um, experience a time in their career where they aren't feeling like they're achieving the success they desire. In fact, I would say that that's how a lot of musicians spend their time and feel on a consistent basis. Now, unless you've ever tried to fully produce a song, you can't imagine the time and work involved. You start from getting the initial inspiration and perhaps jotting down the idea or recording on your phone, then translating that idea to an instrument. And then there's a time spent writing the lyrics. And then when that's done, you have the entire recording process. So from the time that it takes for you to get your initial inspiration for a song to the time it's fully produced and released, we're talking about a few months to maybe even a couple of years, depending on how quickly you're working. Plus all the expenses that are involved throughout the process. That's why when it comes time for you to finally release your music, you want it to receive the recognition it deserves, or at least have the song go beyond the people in your immediate friends and families. That way, more than them are just listening to it. And it's this feeling that will drive a lot of artists and bands to invest their hard-earned money into things like playlist placement and social ads and PR campaigns, all because they desperately want their music to be heard and all because they just want to be successful. Now, unfortunately, this is also the same scenario that I just described damages a lot of damages and also kind of ends, you know, most music careers. Because once you take the course cost of recording and add in the promotional cost I just mentioned, you can easily spend thousands of dollars on a single release. And the problem with this is for most independent musicians, they just don't sell enough music to cover that cost. Um, and you can only do that so many times. Um, before your career ends. Um, and then, you know, people around you are saying, you got to do the responsible thing and do the quote unquote, you know, get a real job kind of stuff that musicians hear all the time. And it just simply doesn't need to be that way. Now, the question is, or the questions are, how do you build an audience that's passionate about your career and one that's large enough to pay you a full-time income? And how do you do this without paying a dime for promotion? Well, today's answer is today's topic, and that is the buyer's journey. Now, we're going to give a brief PowerPoint presentation, probably about 10 or 15 minutes, depending how quickly I talk. Um, and then after that, we will open up for questions. All right. Um, give me one second to take a sip of tea. So I have saliva. That's important when speaking to people. All right. So what is the buyer's journey? Now, let's do a quick review for those of you that aren't familiar with the process, and then we're going to break it down further than we have again in the past. Now, this picture represents the buyer's journey, which for musicians is the process where someone is transformed from a follower into a fan and from a fan into a financial supporter. And it also represents the emotional journey your fans go through as they travel through your customer funnel. Now, it's important that you understand the stage of this process because to grow your audience and earn a full-time income, it isn't enough just to create a customer funnel. 
You also need to create a system that will encourage your audience to progress through each stage and that will nurture your relationship with them. Now, quick thing to note before we break down the buyer's journey, to nurture your relationship with your fans, you'll need to provide them with an emotional experience through your brand and what we call your signature sales story. Now, we aren't going to go th- in detail about what a signature sales story is during this show, but what you need to know is a signature sales story is a narrative that communicates your brand to your audience by highlighting specific emotional hooks that you feel will resonate with fans. So basically, it communicates the things that you and your music stand for. And it's these emotional hooks that build your connection with your audience. So let's break down each stage of the buyer's journey. Now, the first stage is unawareness. During this stage, the buyer doesn't know you exist, but is looking for new music. So they search places where they can discover something new to listen to, such as services like YouTube or at a live show. Now, this search leads them to the second stage, which is awareness. And this is when someone discovers your music. And once someone is aware you exist, your goal is to encourage that person to check out more of your music or videos and they get them to follow you on social media. Because following you on social media is a low level commitment most people are willing to make and it allows you the opportunity to continue sharing content with them to the point where they move on to the third stage, which is interest. Now, once someone is convinced that they like your music and your videos, the next step in their journey is to decide whether or not they like you as a person. Now, this decision will be based on what they discover when researching your background. Your job during this stage as a musician is to use the emotional hooks from your brand to encourage them to learn more about you. This is done by engaging with them through your social media posts and persuading them to visit your website so they can learn more about you. And once they're on your website, your next task is to provide them with more in-depth information about yourself through things like your bio and personal photo gallery. Now, if they decide that they like what they see and what they read, your next end goal here is to get them to move to the next stage, which is desire. Now, once they reach this stage, you want to see if you can capture their email address. Therefore, we recommend having a call to action, which includes an incentive, like a free download, um, that will encourage them to join your mailing list. Now, capturing an email address is important for two reasons. From a business perspective, it gets you their contact information, which will allow you to directly message them about upcoming releases and shows. But more importantly, it signifies the moment when a potential fan becomes an actual fan. Because when they give you their email address, they're saying they want to be more involved in your career. And once they join your mailing list, this is when they can begin being receptive towards sales offers. And it'll only be a matter of time before they enter the final stage of the buyer's journey, which is action. Now, your new fan is ready to buy something from you, and your job is simply to get them to make their first small purchase, something like $10 or less, like buying a track, album, button sticker, or a ticket at a live show. And after they make their first purchase, you can begin to make work your way to getting to make their second purchase and then a bigger purchase and so on. And during the action stage, it's crucial to show your appreciation for every purchase they make. Letting them know how much their support means will make them feel extra good about their purchase and will encourage them to continue buying. And that's the overall process of the buyer's journey. Now, when it comes free time for you to create your own buyer's journey, you're going to need to have a system in place that addresses each one of these stages. So for every show you play or post you make, you need to have a virtual trail of breadcrumbs that people can follow to a destination that first and foremost captures the fans emails. And then once you have that email, you'll use it to build a deeper relationship with those fans so that you can eventually sell to them. Now let's take a deeper look at each stage. Now, as we said already, the first stage is unawareness. Now, again, during this stage, a buyer doesn't know you exist, but is looking for new music. So they search places where they can discover something new to listen to, such as services like YouTube or at a live show. So your first job is to sit down and think about the ways you're going to attract your audience. And again, a few common ways involve playing live shows. Obviously, COVID makes this difficult, but you know when you're going, you can do outside concerts, or even things online. Um, But you can also do things like covering songs on YouTube or collaborating with other artists. The key thing in this stage is to figure out where your audience spends their time and then create hooks that attracts them in those places. And then once you're done, you can move on to stage two, which again is awareness. And this is when someone discovers your music and once someone is aware you exist, 
Your goal is to encourage that person to check you out more of your music or your videos and to get them to follow you on social media. Because again, this is a low level commitment a lot of people will make. So if you use YouTube to interact to attract your fans, then you're going to begin by posting videos of maybe cover songs from artists whose audiences you feel would like your music. Um, and then when those fans discover your cover, if they like it, you'll, you'll have them, you know, subscribe to your channel and get them to listen to your original music. Now, the question is, how do you do that? Well, the first type technique is pretty simple. It's by asking when you watch, if you've ever seen a YouTube video online, there's a reason why every YouTube video includes a personal message asking people to subscribe to the channel and click the notification button. Um, because in most cases, people just need to be told what to do. So you want to make sure that you everything that you post online includes some sort of action message if you want the person reading or watching to take action. And the second technique is by including the links to your site in the description of each post and the links to other music on your channel. So again, if you're on YouTube, there's a place on the description in each and every video that should be filled out with information, not only about the song, but where people can get a more in-depth look on your website or on other channels that you are promoting. But again, whatever system that you set up, you want to make sure that when the people are done following each link, it leads to somewhere where you can either make a sale or first and foremost, capture an email address. Now, if you're hosting a live show, either online or in person, ways to attract new fans will include things such as bringing a friend, asking like fans to bring friends to the shows or playing shows with other artists. Then at your show, you want to be actively collecting emails and get audience members um, to follow you on your primary social media channel. Um, and you can basically use similar techniques when attracting fans on other channels as well. Okay. Now, the next stage is interest. And again, once someone is convinced that they like you and your music, this is the next stage is convincing them that whether or not they like you. And that's going to be done mostly through your website. Now, the question is, how do you accomplish this? Well, if you're at a live show, let's say, this can be done by telling stories about yourself and the songs you're performing, um, which can let people know the kind of person you are. You can also have a Q&A after the show, so fans have the opportunity to ask you questions. Um, another technique is even by just by talking to the audience during the show and learning a little bit more about them. Um, and finally, if it's an in-person show, mingling with the crowd after your performance is key. Uh, now, obviously, you're not going to talk to 100 people per show, but if you can even make a connection with a handful of people, it's worth it. I'll take five meaningful followers or my five meaningful relationships over a hundred casual followers any day of the week, because those five people will honestly support your career. And that's kind of the connection that you're looking to make. Now, when it comes to doing this online, this can be accomplished by adding a personal message before and after a music video or posting about the things you believe in or that interest you on your social media channels. Um, this can include everything from your favorite sports team to the social causes that you're passionate about. The key thing here is to be genuine. And when someone visits your website, you want to have it set up in a way that reflects who you are as an artist and as a person. Um, this again is done through your bio, photos, or even a brand video. And a tip when writing your bio for your website, we highly recommend writing in the third person. Now, it's the industry standard to write everything in the first person, you know, because that makes you look professional. And that's an important bio to have. Stop you right there, Greg. You reverse them. You want to write in the first person instead. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's why I have uh, TJ put my notes before looking at them. I mean, I really looked that up too. I'm sorry. That's a little bit of a brain fart. Apologies. <laughs> All right. Definitely not on my game today with, with, with talking and stuff. But okay. So you want to write that in the first person. Um, the now I'm well confused, but okay. It's basically you want to have the one on your website that the fans are going to read in the first person because you're working at growing a personal relationship with them. The third person bio is more for your press release. Um, when someone's going to copy and paste it into the articles that they're writing, um, or they're using it, you know, on your behalf. Um, but when someone enters on your website and they go to read your bio, you really want to be welcoming them, explaining to them who you are, what you do, what your goals are. Um, and you want to be staying in a way to where they kind of feel like they have access to you. 
Um, the last thing you want to do is have it in the third person where people just kind of feel like, okay, well, I'm not really connecting with this artist online. Um, and that's because that's a problem. Like, again, you're trying to build an emotional relationship. So if people are on the website and feel like it's maybe run by like a website manager, it's just not going to have the same feel that you want when you're building an independent career on your own. Okay, so the next stage here is desire. So the person likes your music. They've, you know, you've conveyed your personal message. You've shown that who you are as an artist. Now you want to see if you can capture their email address. Now to do this, we recommend having a call to action, which includes an incentive like a free download that will encourage them to join your mailing list. Now you can also make your mailing list a little bit more fun by giving your 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 fan club a name. This makes people like they're, feel like they're joining an experience and not simply signing up to get updates on your career, which at the end of the day is honestly what you want. When you're building a relationship with a fan, the relationship needs to be mutually beneficial. And I feel like this is a major point that most musicians don't think about because in the past, artist to fan communication has been one way. But in today's industry, it's two ways. So you're building a, a mutually beneficial relationship with your audience. Now, because you want your fans to support your career, you need to figure out a way to support their needs, which typically becomes, you know, from you delivering a fun experience, whether that's a, a show or a community or whatever that is, but you need to think of it in that way. Okay. And finally, we have the last stage, which is action. Now, again, this is the point where a fan is ready to buy something from you and your job is simply to get them to make their first purchase, something small, something small, like $10 or less, because again, that would be easier for them to do than a, you know, your triple vinyl that's going to cost $150. Now, you can begin this process by simply including promotional messages in your newsletter, um, but you may need to personally message people um, early on and ask them to buy your latest single or invite them to a show. And this is a key point because if you don't ask them, they may never do it. But no matter how you approach this, you always want to show your fans appreciation and let them see the benefits of supporting your career and being a fan and a member of your community. Now, showing your fans having fun at shows or enjoying the merch that they purchase from you is really important to encourage other people to do the same. Um, and you want to really present an experience that people want to be a part of. Now, Again, after they make their first purchase, it'll be easier for them to make their second purchase and then a bigger purchase and so on. But it starts with you white gloving it and giving them a little bit more personal attention to get them past their first buy. Um, and that's the buyer's journey in more detail. Um, the key thing here that we want you to really realize is you need to make this process your own. So we can tell you all the steps involved and all the things you need to do, um, to be successful. But at the end of the day, it's really going to be you that has to discover what that recipe and what that layout and what the messaging looks like, because you're unique. And again, your audience is unique. And that's something that we can't tell you or anyone else can tell you. It's something that you do need to discover for your own by talking to your audience. All right. Excellent, Greg. Thank you. Minus my I can't believe I screwed that up because that's I, I must have said that for the last like five you were, years. You, you sounded so confident. I just I just had to step in. <laughs> <laughs> Every so often, people, I like to pretend like I don't know what I'm talking about, just so he, TJ feels good about himself. You want to keep, <laughs> to keep me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> just want to see if you did that. Once I kind of get into using who and whom properly, then you know I'm really going after TJ. <laughs> But yeah, that 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 first person thing is so key. I mean, we see everyone just thinks that they need to, to put their their bio in third person because that's what they see other people do. But it's you don't want you don't want your fans to feel like there's a wall between you and them. You want you know in this day and age, you want people to feel like when they when they write to you on your uh, in your email off your website or when they contact you on your Instagram, you don't want them to think there's some intermediary between you and them. You want to have, engage them in a conversation. So it's so important. Um, yeah. And, uh, I'm, and I'm glad I was there to, to, to clarify that for you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I would be lost without you. And you know that. <laughs> well, it says I is first person because the num the person speaking is number one. Yes. That's a good mnemonic device. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's just get all the, the, the making fun of Greg quotes. Yeah, I work <laughs> like four jobs here, man. You know, <laughs> tell me some slack. I've been sleeping lately and I got a move coming up, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, 
I know first person, third person. Sometimes it's just one of those things. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So that's the show for today. Uh, so everyone have a great day and remember we're always here to help if you need it. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in creating a professional brand that's going to help you to transform your casual followers into financial supporters, then I invite you to take our free brand creation program that we call your signature sales story. You can find the link for it in the description below. And please don't forget to subscribe. Your support really matters and helps us a lot. Have a great day.